This is Angela Greenig. She came to my studio in Chicago to tell me about a girl she helped lead out of Satanism. If my eyes were shut before, they certainly weren't anymore. And so what ended up happening was she came and sat down and, and the darkness that was all over this child was like really none I've ever seen before. And I've really done thousands of deliverances through the years, but her eyes were pitch black. I don't remember ever seeing any white in her eyes. Well, An Anton LaVey had a vision that one of the fifth brides of Satan would fall, and meaning falling as sleeping outside of the coven and bearing a child, and this, this other girl would have to retake her place. And uh, one day he says, uh, okay, this little girl's going to be born in this hospital at this day, at this time, and that was me. And I was supposed to replace that, uh, yeah, the fifth bride or whatever, what her, I don't want to really repeat her name and stuff. And I was supposed to train from the time I was born until uh, my 17th uh, birthday to retake her place. This is, well, we'll call her Esther. I can't tell you her real name, show you her face, or even play her real voice. She lives in constant threat from her past. She was chosen to be something called a Bride of Satan. I've seen Satan, and Satan is, he looked to me in the way he appeared to, uh, yeah, the crowd or whatever, and came to us as yeah, the brides that were standing there, or the bride-to-be or whatever, as a Spanish prince. And it, he, I mean, that's, that's what I saw, mm -hmm. and says, and in order to be the fifth bride, I mean, you're all supposed to sleep with Satan. And he came as a Spanish prince. I mean, he was very alluring. Everything about him drew yourself. It's, he, he, was, he had the presence, but it was cold and it was freaky. But at the same time, it was like your ma your magnet. It was like, you, it's like you're a duster. He's drawing you to him. I mean, he said he was Satan. I could have been wrong at that time because I was so possessed, so... But for a split second, I could think for myself. It was like this veil was taking off my head. It was like this heavy weight. It was like I could see, think for myself for like, I think, three, four seconds. I could think for myself. I'm, I'm going to widen up like those kids. I'm going to I'm gonna also do something wrong within, yeah, the satanic rituals or whatever. And then they're going to be pissed off. And I'm going to wind up on uh, the 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 altar where they're gonna sacrifice me. It's like, I gotta get out. So, no, did you know when she showed up what, who she was, or did you know anything about her? Nope, they just told me her name was Esther, but I knew she was very high up, satanically. I knew that. To be honest, I did not know she was one of the fifth brides to be. And I took my last dosage of heroin, and she, then we were off to my big D-Day, Cool. Uh, is what I call my deliverance day or whatever. And she maybe had been blocks away, and the presence of the darkness was so strong that there was literally a quaking in the natural. You could feel it. We knew she was coming. And then within a matter of two minutes, this car pulled down the driveway. And I threw the door open without, of course, I just used the powers. And she literally flung the front door open, and I looked her right in the eyes and said, I don't think so, babe. And mom catches, she's like, I don't think so, babe. And, and then she looked me directly in the eye, and I was like, this, this woman's talking to me in an authoritative tone. Who is this woman? It's like, you don't just talk to me like that. I wasn't used to being talked down to. And she started manifesting, and she was on drugs, you could tell. I didn't know if it was heroin or what she was on, but I knew she was on something. And I look at her and her eyes are piercing. Like massive light is, is like love was piercing into my soul. But as we started to speak, um, her head went three times, three different ways. And she said, we know who you are. We know who you are. We know who you are. She looks strictly in my face and I'm just like, at this point, I can't take looking into her eyes anymore because, yeah, it was a, it was a weird ex experience. It was like the demons were not just like, don't look at her eyes, don't look at her eyes. And I wanted to look because I wanted to see the light. And it was like they wanted to continue to take my head. 
and control me from that moment and just didn't want me to see the light anymore because that was influencing me. And she's like, do you want, do you want Jesus or do you want Satan? Which, which will be? The, the choice is yours. And in this glimpse, like of a second, this little girl jumped through her skin and said, help me. And then the demon pulled her back. And then she uh, yeah, did the D-Day, the deliverance. And she asked the angels to hold me down. And it didn't take no five hours or seven days. It took like 20 minutes. And I was totally, completely delivered. And I woke, I, I blacked out from that point. I remember saying the sinner's prayer and then I felt like 90% of my body was missing. She, she asked, we, we prayed that the Holy Spirit would come and fill me because yeah, once someone's gone through an extreme deliverance like that, they need to be filled with Jesus' love or Holy Spirit or whatever, you know? You have to fill the void because yeah, if you don't, and then it goes really bad really fast. Um, the first year, honestly, was just absolutely insane. No one would believe the stories of, you know, us going into stores and, you know, we had people following us and they're trying to abduct her out of the stores. And I mean, it was just crazy. And I lost a lot of friends in ministry because they just thought it was like sci-fi or something. They didn't believe her, but I knew, I knew that what she had gone through was real. I'll spare you the details of rape, drugs, and murder Esther went through while in Satanism because it's simply too graphic. Esther isn't looking for a book deal or more speaking engagements. There's no gain for her in talking about this. So I listened to her. You have to also face reality. We're born in a war, man. It's, it, it's, it's from day one there. It's a fight for, uh, for light and for darkness. I mean, you're born inside of a war. But we have to be aware that the darkness is trying to influence. And we have to be prepared to stand up and fight and work together with each other. It's, the church has to wake up. I mean, there's always enough. That's, that's, that's Jesus, he's beautiful. I mean, love is for everybody. Love conquers all, eh? Mm -hmm. I mean, look at me, I'm a walking, yeah, miracle. The